Hi, welcome to Spiral Up with Ava Marie. Today we have an extraordinary woman with us and she's an entrepreneur, she's written a book, run her own company, designer, promoter, manufacturer, amazing person and she's also had some major health challenges in her life. And I'm not going to tell you how old she is, we're going to save that till the end of the show. But I guarantee that you're going to think she's at least three decades younger than she actually is. She has such vigor and vitality. And her name is Renette Torres. Welcome, Renette. Nice to have you here today. Thank you, Ava Marie. Nice to be here. So we get to talk about you for a little while and some of the challenges that you faced in your soul uh, journey on this planet. And I'd like to know, first of all, um, what really uh, spurred you into the watch business. Why did you think that you could be a watch designer when you had never designed watches before? What made you think of doing this and saying yes to the idea and becoming a successful entrepreneur? Well, I started out in the retail field, working for a company called Besco Jewelers in Walnut Creek. And I learned all about the inner workings of watches. Oh, I, I sold diamonds. Then I graduated to K Jewelers, right. 40 stores up and down California. So you were a rep, a manufacturer's no, rep? No, I, I, was, I was behind a counter, oh. retail counter. Okay. They, K Jewelers never, ever hired a woman to sell diamonds or watches. You were the first woman that yes. they ever hired in the company to sell mm -hmm. diamonds? To sell. To sell diamonds. They hired people to be in back in the credit office. Huh. But they hired me. I was the first. I was a pioneer. Okay. And I did very well there. In fact, I did so well that uh, Sheffield Watch Company, which is uh, was out of New York, mm -hmm said I was wasting my time behind a retail counter and that I should be in outside sales. And it took nine months to hire me. Nine months? And why we, why well, did it take so long to hire you? You'd think I was having a baby, huh? <laughs> Maybe you were kind of birthing a new vision somehow through this they, whole thing. You know? and they had never, ever, ever hired a woman to be an outside rep. I see. Again, I was a pioneer. You were the first. And they I took a chance on you. Right. And I showed them how it's done by a woman. So you've been a very successful salesperson. But starting your own company, what made you think that you could start a watch company? It was all by a fluke. I was working for a company out of Los Angeles called Watches West, Rings West. And um, I was their rep in California and Nevada, northern Nevada. And I dealt with all the casino and hotel buyers in Reno. And I had a, um, actually a, a meeting with six other buyers besides uh, Gloria Julius, who was the purchasing agent for Harris and I was showing, I, we did all the purchase orders, everything was fine. I told them, big orders, good size orders, I'll take you to lunch, all of you to lunch at Harris Steakhouse. They liked that idea, <laughs> on me, on my boss actually. And um, I was showing a young man's a little stick at clocks, right. little plastic, insig insignificant little tiny, inexpensive clocks. Right. Well, none of the buyers wanted them. Mm -hmm. So they said, nah, Renette, we don't want those. Put them away. Mm -hmm. So as I was putting that tray of clocks into my case, I said, well, if not these, how about a slot machine clock? A slot what? machine clock? Where a did you come up with that idea? <laughs> just off the top of your head, right in the moment, right then? Right you off just thought of it? Or had you thought of it ahead of time? Nope. 
right off the top of my head. Wow. Here That's it. it. <laughs> That's it. That's it. <laughs> That's your ticket to success? That's it. Wow. And I didn't have any idea of what I was getting myself into. <laughs> I really didn't. <laughs> so they were excited about that. They were very excited. They said, where is it? Let me see it. And I didn't even know what I said. I said, <laughs> where's what? <laughs> you didn't know what you said. <laughs> Maybe the creative forces of the universe were speaking through you. Uh, I think so. Yeah. Anyway, I, with my husband's help, um, he was a, an accountant, a financial man, and uh, with his help, I uh, was able to find a injection molding company because uh, I didn't know what the first where to start, you know. And uh, funny that I should call. Let me see. He was the fourth one I called. Sure. His name was Andy Fessis. Uh -huh. He was a little Greek man that loved to gamble yeah. and loved to play the slot machines. <laughs> And three other, I had been refused by three other companies. But you didn't give up. No. No, I got, he was my fourth. And he said, oh my gosh, this sounds like such a fabulous idea. Wow. So he just said yes to it right off the top. Yeah. Went down, talked to him, sh showed him my idea mm -hmm. on paper. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually, I had a prototype made up. Mm -hmm. And uh, did you have a copyright done before you went? Not there? yet. Ooh, not yet. Mm -hmm. But there is a copyright on it. Yeah. I did get the copyright. That's important. To do. Very yeah. important. Yeah. Very important on all my watches and clocks. Mm -hmm. How many watches and clocks have you designed? You're so creative. You do these wonderful little faces on them. And let's talk about some of the little faces and designs on the different watches that you've done. Okay. Well, all my watches, most of my watches are a moving dial watches. Like, um, like, <laughs> I don't have anything. <laughs> I have one on me. <laughs> I don't know if you can see this. Uh -huh. It's a little small probably for our camera to see, but okay. I see the little um, eyeglasses moving okay. around. That's darling. And for, for <laughs> every uh, 60 seconds, the eyes wear glasses. The eyes? The eyes wear glasses. Watch. Oh, so oh, the glasses. Isn't that the glasses are the sweep second Aww. hand, and pretty soon the glasses are going to have eyes. Oh, there they are. Yeah, that's amazing. You are so brilliant. That is so brilliant. Your creativity never ends, does it? It just keeps flowing through you. It does. I think that's the secret of your joy, is that you're allowing yourself to say yes to your creative powers and creative ideas and they flow through you so you're always energized. I never stop thinking of new things to do. And you're a golfer and you play tennis? I used to play tennis until I had a brand new knee. Oh, so you're not playing tennis anymore, but no. you did that for many years. Very, mm -hmm. we were both wonderful tennis players, Danny and I, had racket, will travel. And you traveled all around the world, haven't all you? All over the world. Now, did your business um, open up all these travel opportunities? And uh, that's how you saw the world, was through your business? Or was it pleasure too? Well, and it was mostly pleasure, okay. but um, we did the Hong Kong uh -huh. watch fair and the Basel, Switzerland watch fair. I would do that several, you know, several years. And uh, I sold to people in Australia and Canada. And all over. How many different designs have you come up with Gosh, in the watch business? Um, probably, I would say probably over a hundred different wow. watch designs. That's amazing. It's like a hundred pieces of art is that's, what it is. That's what it is. A unique design, a unique sculpture, a unique picture. Right. Wow. But not just like the cable car, San Francisco cable car watch or the golf watch or whatever, but um, I did logo watches for companies, like my husband's company was Knob Hill Foods. Mm -hmm. He was the CFO, and I thought Michael Bonfanti, who was the president of the company, should give his employees some kind of a gift at Christmas time. Mm -hmm. And so I designed a watch with their logo on it, 
and they snapped it up.